The question I get asked the most is how do I grow my hair? I, it seems like I get it to a certain point and it stops or my hair just never grows or whatever the case may be. I'm gonna, Curl Logic is on a mission to make sure that everyone loves their hair. And to that end, we are launching our growth series, a five part video series on YouTube where I will go through each principle. I will share small steps that you can take that will make the maximum impact on your hair growth. On Instagram, I will share additional information about that particular principle. So this is our first video in the series. In this video, we will talk about babying your hair. So not just taking care of it, but really babying it. I really feel like because us curly girls are strong and resilient people that we assume that our hair is strong and resilient as well. But the truth is, as you go up the curly chart, the hair gets more fragile, meaning that type three and especially type four are the most fragile hair types out there. And if you're like me, you style your hair when it's wet. And when your hair is wet, it's in its most fragile state. So you're styling the most fragile hair type in its most fragile state, but you're yanking and you're pulling and you're combing and you're brushing and you're taking all your hair out. So if you are on a mission of growth like I am, stay tuned. Next one, no one on the planet can convince me that I'm wrong. And I mean no one. It would take sweet Jesus himself coming down to take me up to heaven to say, you know what, Daisha? You were wrong about that one, though. You don't need trims. Let's say you have to trim your hair every four to six weeks. Because let's think about it for a second. Your hair grows from your scalp. So all the pieces of your body that's helping your hair grows come out through your face and it grows all this pretty hair. So explain to me if your hair starts from your insides that if I cut something that's dead, it's gonna magically make my hair grow. That's just not the way hair works. So you only need to get trims if your ends are split, and that's it. That is absolutely it. And honestly, if you're avoiding heat, moisturizing your hair, and tying it down every night, the chance that you're actually gonna have split ends is gonna be pretty low in anyway. Dry hair breaks, plain and simple. There's no other way to say it. So make sure that you're getting moisture to your hair and you're getting moisture in the right way. And a lot of that depends on your porosity. So knowing if you're a low or a high porosity and how that impacts how you get and keep moisture in your hair is really important. So I am a low porosity person, which means porosity is basically just how many pores are in your hair. You can think of it that way. And low porosity means your hair takes forever to get wet and it takes forever to dry. Like for instance, I wanted to do this video with the twist out all nice and fresh. Two days later, my hair's still wet, so you get the video with the twists in. But if I'm not the only one and then you're in the same camp, then most likely you're low porosity, which means that when you get moisture in your hair, it stays in your hair. Beautiful, wonderful thing, but you've got to really work that moisture through. You can't just put it on your hair and think it's there. So to really help the moisture, try after you put in whatever hair cream or oil that's your favorite, Try putting it in bantu knots or twists or something to give your hair a chance to really absorb it. Now on the other end of the spectrum, if you are high porosity, that means your hair gets wet in an instant and it dries really quickly. You could do a twist out at let's say nine o'clock at night and in the morning you wake up your hair is dry, then you, my friend, are a high porosity person. So high porosity, the plus side, is that moisture goes in your hair super easy, no problem. But the downside to that is it also escapes your hair pretty easily. So you may have a problem keeping moisture in your hair. One of the things to do is to layer that moisture on. So start with a leave-in conditioner all the time. Never skip your leave-in. Put a hair cream on top and then put an oil on top to seal it. Now, I will put more information on Instagram about oils because you have two different kinds. You have oils that seal your hair and then you have oils that are moisturized. And you don't want to use them in the wrong way. Before I jump to the next one, if you're high porosity, protective styles are going to be your best friend if you're trying to grow your hair. The next tip is to cut down on the tension because all of that tension over time does start to add stress to your hair. and. I won't say weaken it, but it does help to encourage the breakage. If a high bun or some other really tight style is your go-to style, switch it up and wear your hair down more, or just do it a little bit looser next time. Now these next two tips point to me being probably the laziest natural you will ever meet. I have, and I say lazy natural because I'm super busy. I've got tons of things to do, and I'm not gonna sit here and spend 600 years doing my hair. It's just not gonna happen. So I do things that will save me time and save me energy. And bonus, it helps with hair growth. This one is really easy to adopt. Wash your hair less. Washing your hair in general just puts stress and strain on your hair. I mean, it's impossible not to no matter what. You're putting it back into its weak state. 
and you're styling, you're touching, and you're doing other things with it. So if you're washing it less, that's going to be better for your hair growth. Now, some people wash their hair every single day, depending on they don't want the oil buildup or they like a fresh wash and go every day. Try pushing it to two or three. If you're a person that washes your hair every week, try washing it a week and a half. I don't actually have a set schedule on when I wash my hair. I just wash it when it needs it. If it's looking dull, if it's starting to get dry, if it's if it can't keep the moisture in that I'm putting it in, then I know there's some buildup and I need to wash my hair. Just keep in mind, if you're going beyond a week, you still have to keep your hair moisturized and you still have to keep your scalp clean. I personally use a combination of oils that, that have anti-inflammatory or antibacterial properties and then massage that in my scalp. So one, I get my scalp clean and plus I'm improving the circulation of my scalp, which is going to help with the hair growth. But you want to make sure you've got to keep your scalp clean because not washing your hair is fine, not washing your scalp can impact your hair growth. The last tip is to leave your hair alone. And I know that's easier said than done because you want to touch it, you want to make sure everything is absolutely perfect, but it is so important to just leave it. So when I do a twist out in the morning, I either sleep with it in um, a high ponytail or I just have it down and put a sleeping bonnet on it. All I do is shake my head. I may adjust it and like stretch and move it to get it in the right place, but I don't fix, if there's a twist out that's not perfect, I'm not fixing it. If there's something else that's going on, I'm not fixing it. Because one, we're our worst critic, and most people are not gonna notice those one or two tendrils that are not perfectly coiled the way as the rest. And secondly, the more you touch your hair, the more you're encouraging shedding. So you shed between 50 and 150 strands a day. My goal is to be closer to that 50, if not lower than the 50 if I can. So the more you touch it, the more you're encouraging shedding. And because the hair is curly, the hair that sheds kind of mingles with the hair that's in the scalp and it creates tangles. So the best thing you can do is find a style that you like and just leave it alone. It doesn't have to be a protective style. So I rock a twist out, I just don't touch a twist out. When I touch it, that means it's time for me to do it. This was growth principle number three, baby your hair. There are four others that will be posted on YouTube as I create them. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more information and comment below if there's some of these tips that you definitely want more info on. There's a lot of things to do with your hair. Just take your time. Don't try to do everything at once and be consistent. So this is Daisha with Curlogic. Thanks for watching.